Very good day to all you patriots out there, and welcome back to Tall Ship Tuesday. I do apologise for our untimely interruption last time. I was trying to recount to you the tale of uh, when Captain Rathbun had tried to take a merchant ship prize and found himself fired upon by three ships in the convoy. Uh, a momentary lull in the fighting allowed Providence to slip away for a moment of respite and allowed Captain Rathbun to reassess the situation. Or many captains may perhaps try to uh, give up and leave, but Captain Rathbun is not to be underestimated. I shall pick up where we left off with my letter from John Trevet. So, if I can open this, there we are. So all hands were put to making emergency repairs to the rigging while the damages were assessed. Several men were wounded, but the worst discovery was that Sailing Master George Simpkins had been killed. I was most distressed to hear it. He was a fine man and an excellent Sailing Master. Alas, there was no time to mourn. His body was hove overboard, the rigging repaired, and Providence was turned about, ready to attack again. Just after sunset, Providence came up on the ship. Trevette writes that they were determined to board her, knowing that if they could capture the ship, the other vessels in the convoy would be theirs as well. Providence got within half pistol shot and gave the ship a full broadside with their four pounders. This round shot away the ship's colours and a cheer rose from Providence's men who thought the ship had surrendered. Not so. The ship hoisted another Union Jack and the battle resumed, with the other vessels also raining fire upon Providence, which our sloop returned as best she could. When in battle, the world around you seems to recede. So focused does one become on performing one's duty, following the rhythm of loading, ramming, firing, recoiling, again and again and again. It's the captain's job to stay away from the fray, keep a clear head and see the larger picture. <laughs> and so Captain Rathbun may have seen that this battle has won and eventually ceased fire. Captain Rathbun is no fool. But seeing he cannot take the grand prize, he set his sight on a lesser one. The schooner of the convoy had sailed a short distance ahead and was no longer protected by the other vessels. Providence set a new course, quickly caught up with the schooner and took her prize before darkness fell. She carried a cargo of horses and carriages which will fetch a fine price. Rathbun also learned from the schooner's sailing master that the convoy was headed for Jamaica and that the ship, the Mary by name, though she had looked like an unprotected merchant ship actually mounted 16 guns and that her captain held a commission from the Royal Navy. Her capture would have meant Rathbun's reputation instantly. He must have known it for he set his helm on the course he believed Mary would follow, hoping to have another opportunity to take her at daybreak. Alas, there was no sign of her in the morning. Uh, the letter ends there, but I suspect this is not the last we'll hear of it. Uh, I do want to revisit my question from last week. I did ask uh, about the qualities one might hope to find in a leader. Captain Rathbun, I believe, possessed many sound qualities. Uh, that of knowing when to give up one's fight and to go for a bit of a smaller prize. Sort of a lesson in, I believe the expression is, biting off more than one can chew. Captain Rathbun knew that that's not necessarily the best way to go in all situations, and that you should step back, take a look at the situation, and go for what you can take. Now, Rathbun's mission ended quite successfully for him, even though he did not seize the grand prize of the large 16-gun ship. But it does provide some things to think about. I do thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you back here next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Have a good week.